Welcome to the Razer Huntsman Mini Modding Tutorial. Let's jump right into it, but if at any point during the video you want to check out any of the stuff that I'm going to use to mod this exact same keyboard, you can click right over there in the left corner to check out everything, but let's jump into step one. And step one is to take off all of the keycaps then proceed to use a flathead screwdriver to pry the stabilizer pieces off the shift, spacebar, enter, and backspace keys. Step two is to unscrew the massive amount of screws on the top plate. Make sure not to strip any of these, so go slowly. Then, gently pull the PCB and plate off of the case. After this, rather than disconnecting the control board and the USB-C, we are just gonna unscrew this part from the case. There are three screws here, so make sure to go ahead and unscrew those. Moving on to step three, we are going to remove the switches. Now to do this, you have to grab the PCB and plate and you have to press very firmly on the back of each switch. Now, when I say very firmly, I do mean very firmly. It takes a lot of pressure and it really hurts your fingers if you're not using something like a glove. Now, I recommend using like a piece of cardboard like I used or a glove or something to protect your skin because it does hurt quite a bit if you don't use this. Next, step four is to remove the four screws on the back of the PCB to detach the plate from the PCB. Then we are going to take out the stabilizers by pinching them from the top and pushing down. And again, this is on the PCB after you remove it from the plate. Now the stabilizers do pop out very easily, so this should be pretty easy. Step five is to disassemble the stabilizers. Now this is a little bit different from your typical stabilizers, a non-razor stabilizer, but they're actually quite easy and even easier than typical ones. Just twist at a 90 degree angle and they will pop right out and they, they can pull straight out. You don't even have to put them in a 90 degree angle to take them out and that's it. Moving on to step six, we are going to get ready the case for painting. We first are gonna remove the flip up risers on the bottom. So first flip them up into the full nine degrees and then pull gently to one side and they should pop right out. Then we are gonna pull off the plastic covering for the bottom information. There'll be a little clear plastic over that bottom text. I wasn't able to get that bottom text out with it, but again, moving on to step seven, we're gonna sand that off. So step seven is to stand the case and the plate. We are using a mixture of water and dish soap in a spray bottle for wet sanding. Then you'll need 400 and 800 grit wet and dry sandpaper. First, spray the plate and case and then sand with 400 grit sandpaper. After you've sanded that, then you're gonna rinse both off and dry them thoroughly. Step eight is to tape off the sections of the case. First, I am setting some tape over the standoffs inside the case just so that none of that gets paint on it. Then I'm taping over the rubber parts on the bottom of the case and then I'm using an X-Acto knife to cut those out. This was a really good method and it's much better than actually removing those rubber pieces and then trying to get them to stick back because they probably won't stick like they did the first time. Then we're basically doing the same for the flip up riser area. Again, if you don't do this, the flip up risers will not be able to go in and work like they do on the stock board because the paint will add size. So after you've done that, attach both the plate and the case to a box or whatever you're painting on. Step nine, we are spraying the first coat of primer. Now I am using a non-paint and primer spray paint, so I do have to put primer on before I put the spray paint on. I only put one coat of primer on because I'm lazy, but I put it on pretty thick. Now after this dries, we are again gonna sand it with 800 grit sandpaper this time to get ready for our first coat of paint. Step 10, now we paint. I painted two coats and because it was cold outside, I brought the case inside after spraying. Unfortunately, on the last coat, uh, a drop of melting snow water hit the case, so the bottom of the case is a little bit messed up, but what are you gonna do? Moving on to step 11, while we are letting the paint dry, let's get these stabilizers to sound awesome. It is actually incredibly easy to make these sound really good. So first, take your housing and using some Crytox 205 grade zero lube, we are going to lube the walls. Now again, you're just lubing the walls like you would in anything else. It is very easy because these are pretty small. Then we take some dielectric grease and we're gonna take the wires and stick the ends of the wires into the grease slightly past the 90 degree point. Now you do wanna be generous here because there is quite a lot of movement with these stabilizers. Then reinsert the wire into the housing and snap them in. Then grab the PCB and reinsert the stabilizers back into the PCB by snapping them in. This again is very, very easy. Now step 12 is to lube those switches. So grab your Crytox 205 grade zero again and your brush and first lube the top 
and bottom walls on the upper side and slip the brushes bristles down into that switch. Uh, it sounds really complicated to say, but as you can see here, it's very easy to do. Then do the same on the left and right walls after pressing down the switch. Now, after this, you're gonna add lube where the metal stabilizer bar meets the top of the switch. Now, I went pretty generous. However, you do not need a lot of lube. And honestly, I think I didn't quite over lube them, but I lubed them probably a little bit too much. So again, go pretty easy on your lube here. Now, I tested out the best way to lube these optical switches from Razer, and a lot of people do the whole like spray lube. I think this is a much better way, and it gives way better results. Now, moving on to step 13 is to screw the PCB and plate back together with those four screws. Then reinsert the switches into the plate and PCB, and this part is considerably easier than taking them out. It is a lot easier to push these things in than it is to snap them out. So here you won't need to use any gloves. Moving on to step 14, grab your case and remove all the tape and reattach the flip up risers just like you took them out. Put one side in, push them in and snap them right in. Step 15 is to put some pennies and nickels in the case. Now you don't have to do this uh, because the case has so many standoff sections, it's quite hard to fit stuff in there. Uh, so it's not kind of evened out. Uh, I really just did this to add a little bit of weight to the board because I thought it was a little bit too light for my liking. Uh, so after that, I taped them down and added a little bit of EVA foam in the case. Again, I didn't go insane here. Now step 16 is to reattach and screw in the controller board and the USB-C with again, those three screws. Then screwed on the top plate to the case with the bajillion screws. It's gonna take you a little bit to do this. Moving to step 17, take your stabilizer keycaps and insert the stabilizer hook pieces we removed from the stock keycaps. Then lube the right and left walls with 205 grade zero lube. After this, reinstall them and snap them into the stabilizers. Now step 18, the final step, is to install all of the rest of your keycaps. I'm using $35 GMK clones, which are really cool, but look at this thing. I really love the way it came out, just completely changing the total look of this thing to really look like a custom board from what was before just neither white or black kind of boring board. The sound of the stabilizers is insane. Again, if you wanna check out the Huntsman Mini or anything I use to mod this keyboard, you can click right over there in the left corner. But enough talk, let's get to the sound test. Here is what it sounds like before and after. Take a listen.